Hi, I'd like to introduce Dr. Anju Usman Singh. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Well, you know, I've known you for many years, but so many people are watching, you know, there's so many new diagnoses, people are coming into autism. Can you tell them a little bit about why you're so passionate about what you do and what you do in your practice? Well, I'm a family practice physician by trade, and I kind of got into this field because of the same reasons a lot of you are listening to this, because of our kids. And my own kids have a lot of medical issues, and I was searching for answers. And I started working in this field about 20 years ago. So I've been working on using an integrative approach to help the medical or the underlying medical conditions that children with developmental delays and autism and chronic illnesses have. And so you're currently practicing, where are you currently practicing at? I'm out of the suburb of Chicago called okay. Naperville, and my practice is called True Health Medical Center. I also um, own a compounding pharmacy called Pure Compounding Pharmacy. I started a supplement line called True Health Naturals. So you are, you're in this, man. This is like what you do. Yes. <laughs> I've been in this, and I it's, it's my life. And my so life I know one of your many expertise of what you talk about is um, – the biofilm. I know when I first, I remember seeing you years ago at a conference and that was the first time I'd ever heard of the word biofilm. For those listening, can we just talk about what is biofilm and why is it so important for us to understand? Well, a lot of our kids with chronic illnesses have a chronic potential underlying infection. It's hard to grasp that because when we think of infection, we think, oh, I have a fever, I'm sick, I'm lying in bed. But people with chronic illnesses, their immune systems just don't work the same way other people do. And they may harbor some like low-level chronic infections that are hiding in their body. And oftentimes these low-level infections are in our throat. You know, kids who get like frequent throat infections, the kids who get frequent ear infections, people who get frequent urinary tract infections. There might be these low-level infections hiding under a film. And the term for this film is a biofilm. And these films are made of mucus mostly, a little bit of protein, and they kind of hide the infection under this film. It's kind of like an Atlantis a community of these infections hiding under this film so the immune system can't find it. And the immune, can, and the immune system can't clear it. So um, that's called a pathogenic biofilm. And how do you treat something like that? And how do you even know you have something like that? Well, that's, that's, those are great questions because nobody really knows. Um, we surmise that a lot of these potential chronic infections are hiding under these films. We can't culture them very easy because they're hiding, and so you can't like take a swab and, and find it. So it's based on kind of conjecture. You, you kind of guess. Mm -hmm. And so the whole point of integrative medicine is to kind of help the body to heal naturally using diet, nutrition, but there are some tools we can use to kind of help clear some of this excess mucus that these films are producing and then these bacteria producing these films clear that mucus and we can help the body to see these infections more clearly and clear the infections. Now what symptoms might somebody have if they're having issues you know, with, some, with biofilm you know, uh, in their body? So um, a lot of people with chronic illnesses have persistent yeast issues where they'll have like a yeast infection um, which presents in different ways. Um, they'll take an antifungal medication or antifungal herb. That yeast infection will go away, but then it'll come back. Okay. And then they'll take the herbs again and it'll go away and then they'll come back. So these kind of recurrent, persistent um, infections or a persistent use of needing antibiotics. Now when you're talking about yeast, I know a lot of families that are watching have children with autism and I know for me at least, I didn't understand why I had to care about that word in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was thinking as a woman, you know, you think of yeast infections, but you don't really think of yeast in a child, especially when you've never had any, you know, the general public doesn't really think of that, right? right. Um, what kind of symptoms would a child potentially have that might have yeast um, going on in their body, an overgrowth of yeast, I should say. What kind of symptoms might, might we see? So 
so as you mentioned, you know, our typical thought of yeast in women is like a vaginitis or, you know, um, mucus drainage from the vagina. But we have, um, we all have good yeast in our body, just like we have good bacteria. But sometimes the yeast overgrows and can cause problems. And there's sometimes there's bad yeast, like candida, mm -hmm. for instance. And that I see in my practice doing this for 20 years that that seems to occur in people who have a lot of toxicity. So if we're exposed to a lot of chemicals in our environment or heavy metals, the yeast tend to overgrow. And it might be a protective mechanism that the body has, mm -hmm. but then the yeast overgrowth causes symptoms like you mentioned. And most of the typical symptoms that I see and that I hear from parents is that um, my child is really foggy, they can't think clearly, they're having trouble just paying attention. Um, another really big symptom for yeast um, is just inappropriate laughter. They almost look like little drunks. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kind I of be maniacal. Yeah. Um, parents will say, like, they'll get up in the middle of the night, they'll be laughing for no reason, giggling for no reason, and the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, there's a potential for some type of candida or yeast overgrowth. And most commonly it's in the gut. And so and what do you do to treat that though? Well, we, again, work on diet and nutrition, but um, there are herbs that you can use to kind of eradicate the yeast. But if there's an underlying level of toxicity, that yeast is gonna come back. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you can totally get rid of, but you can manage. And one of uh, my tools is using um, protocols such as a, my, my biofilm protocol that incorporates the use of enzymes and herbs to kind of help clear the yeast at a deeper level. And how, often, how long does that actually take? Is there like a timeline or is everybody different? Everybody's different, but I would say in general to do a protocol to help clear something like that, um, four to six weeks, sometimes eight weeks. And can it but get not, worse before it gets better, though? Yeah, so that term of getting worse before it gets better, we kind of think of something um, on the, the lines of um, this causing die-off, mm -hmm. meaning the yeast is dying, the yeast is releasing toxins to the body, um, it's not leaving as quick as we want it to, and that can cause a little bit of worsening of symptoms. And, you know, that can be scary for people who don't understand What's and happening? other people say, oh, that's a good thing, you know, it's leaving my system, it might be worse for a few days. So we like to ease into these types of protocols. And we like to make sure that the patients are drinking plenty of fluids, having normal bowel movements, just to make sure everything is leaving. And then when you talk about diet, is there certain foods that you ask parents to potentially avoid while you're trying to remove the excess yeast out of the body? Yeah, so if you think about yeast, you think, okay, well, what do they like to eat? Mm -hmm. And they like to eat things that we like to eat. And sometimes I wonder, is it the yeast talking or is it my stomach talking? But um, mostly sugars, you know, um, sugar, sugar, um, high fructose corn syrup is a really big bad player in this. And then refined carbohydrates, anything white, I tell my patients white sugar, white flour, potatoes, rice, they're very high in carbohydrates. And so, so we don't to want avoid to those. feed, we don't want to feed the yeast. And I just want to mention that hiding under this biofilm, we're not sure what's hiding underneath there because we can't culture it out. So you have to have a high degree of suspicion and get a good history. Oftentimes there's strep, there's yeast, there's bacteria, there's parasites. So I really like herbs because they have a wide variety of effects. They're very complex structures, and so they have antiviral properties, antibacterial properties, antiparasitic properties. So uh, it, it doesn't give your big bang for your, you know, kind of instant gratification that a drug would give, but over time they tend to work pretty well. And is it something they have to be on a maintenance for forever, or is it just something until... You know, some they people are healthier better. than others, and I think that the healthier patients, they can do a few of these types of protocols, work on their diet, work on their nutrition, work on their toxicity, detox a little bit, and then they can maintain kind of these kind of dysbiotic 
call it dysbiotic flora. They can maintain the, the yeast, they can maintain the bacteria. But people who are more toxic and more ill, these types of things take take time and have to repeat and kind of um, you know move forward, move backwards, move forward, move backwards. But do you it's see, a process. Oh, the whole everything we do with autism, it feels mm -hmm. as though it's a process. Um, do you see that other families um, in the or other pe family members? in the family also have issues with their biofilm or things hiding, whether it be the parent or a sibling? Yeah, so um, the children that we have get their kind of microbiome, as we, we call it, the bacteria of their body and the bacteria of their gut through the vaginal delivery system. So us moms who have really poor microflora, um, us moms who've been on a lot of antibiotics. Or C-section. Yeah, yeah, frequent strep, who had C-sections. We're not giving our kids that really good flora to help develop their immune system. And I, I do think that in that case, yes, these types of things do run in families because our moms didn't have a good flora. We don't have a good flora so that the bad stuff does grow. And then I think, you know, in, di uh, in terms of families, you know, diets might be similar. Mm -hmm. So fermented foods, things that could help kind of replenish that good flora, you know, we might be eating similar types of foods that are depleted in nutrition or um, depleted in that, that good flora. And now I know you've worked with just so many different families, um, and I, that's why you have your supplement line and your compounding. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how they can find you, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they're watching you right now and they're saying, gosh, I want to find her and I want to be able to, sure. to learn more from you. How can they find you? Well, I have a website. Mm -hmm. um, so my clinic is called True Health Medical Center. So the website is truehealthmedical.com. Mm -hmm. And there's information on that website. And um, I've given lectures at various conferences uh, for autism um, groups, different groups. Um, I, I mean, I can name a lot of different groups, uh, TACA, um, Autism One, Generation Rescue, NAA, um, and I've spoken at a lot of those different conferences. There's various lectures that I've given on these types of matters like biofilm mm -hmm. online as well. Um, I have a supplement company called True Health Naturals, and um, there's a product called Biofilm Defense that I developed to help break down these, these films as you as you mentioned. And um, the website um, for my compounding pharmacy, purecompoundingpharmacy.com. Well, you're a wealth of knowledge. Um, I always learn something every time we talk. For those families that are just getting the diagnosis right now, what kind of advice could you give to, to them that are just learning and they're, they're scared right now? You know, they just heard the word autism and now they realize their child has that. What kind of advice can you give to those families? You know, that's such a scary time, and just hearing what you just said, it just makes my heart hurt. It makes my heart feel heavy, because it's such a um, long road, and you and I know, know how that feels. However, I think that parents should really listen to their heart and listen to their intuition. And if they get advice that's varying from different people, to take a step back and really decide what, how they feel about what it is that they feel is the right thing to do for their child. Absolutely. Follow their gut. Uh-huh. Follow yeah. their heart. Follow their gut. Absolutely. And then work on their gut. Too. Yeah, and then work <laughs> on their gut. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Singh. I very much appreciate you being here. It's always great to talk with you. Thank you.